Hello, welcome to Tabletop CP. Today I will be doing another painting tutorial, this time on Napoleonic Red Coats. This here is Private Jones. This is the first uh, Napoleonic Red Coat that I painted for this entire army way back when. Uh, this is the standard that we, we will be going for, the uh, quote high tabletop standard, which to me just means uh, an extra layer of highlights. So uh, let's get started. First thing we will do is the pants and the bedroll uh, on the back. So I think I've heard this referred to as a great coat before as well, but it looks like a bedroll. So the pants are going to be gray as well as the bedroll, which is what I'll call it. And for that I just use Vallejo Neutral Gray. gray complete. Next thing I will do is the red coat. For that I use the base of Evil Sun Scarlet by Citadel. So that's the red. Uh, there's got a lot of cross belts and stuff, so you don't have to uh, be super careful. I try to just because I think the white goes on a little bit easier when we get to that point. But uh, be fairly, uh, fairly careful. Try to not get as much. Try as, as best you can to not get as any on the uh, cross belts. So next, we're going to do is the facing. So the cuffs. Uh, this is the Royal Scots. So their facings are blue. So we got the cuffs are going to be blue. Uh, there's a strip down the middle here that I do that's blue and then the collar is also going to be blue. I believe there might be a turn back on the back that is supposed to be blue as well but I haven't been doing that and I'm not going to go back and redo them all so uh, if I miss that that may be historically inaccurate but uh, uh, we'll press on anyway. So now we'll do the uh, facings. For that I use this Prussian blue by Vallejo. Next thing I will do is the black. He's got quite a bit of black. Now his boots are black. His pack, his ammo uh, cartridge box is black. The bayonet scabbard and the shako. All those things are black. And for that I was, I'm just going to use regular old black from Vallejo. the black done. Also I forgot, very important, there's two little pegs coming out of the top of the bed roll here. Those are supposed to be black as well. Easy to forget but uh, if you're doing all the black hit those as well. So the next thing I'm going to do is the musket stock. For that I'm going to use my old, stand, my old standby mahogany brown. And I believe, yeah that's the only wood really on this guy is the musket itself. Up will be the uh, rest of the, uh, the musket. It's going to be uh, steel color, so I'm just using oily steel from Vallejo. Any metal color, steel or color will work fine. Uh, it's going to be the musket itself, the barrel, the bayonet, the flint, uh, the flint lock, and the only other thing that's this color on this guy is I I don't even know if this is correct or not, but I do the the end of the bayonet scabbard uh, with the metal. Oh, I'm sorry. And then there's a little adjustment slider on the strap here that I also do uh, steel. I also forgot some of these men have a mess kit strapped to their pack. There's two different varieties. There's this one and then there's a big sort of cooking pan that some of them have strapped with an extra cross piece um, of strapping on the backpack but this guy only has that 
most of them don't have any but I paint that silver as well so the next thing we're gonna do is the canteen and like all of these British it's a nice little pop-up color a nice bright blue canteen it really adds uh, adds a lot to the model I think for that I use this uh, Calador sky from Citadel So that's the canteen done. There is a strap going around the canteen that's holding it to his body. But go ahead and it's fine to just paint over that for now because we're going to go over it with a brown color later. Next up we will do the white. So the white is what takes the longest on these guys. There's quite a bit of white. Both cross belts. There's white on each side of this blue facing on the front. There's a very thin white line that goes around the top of the collar. I believe there's actually one that goes around the bottom of the collar too, but I skipped that because I can't do lines that fine. So I get the same effect with just having it on the top. Uh, the uh, epaulets, you can't see them well, but they are sticking out underneath the straps. There's little lines on the cuffs that are white as well. Uh, what else? Oh, the bread bag's going to be white. I've also done some bread bags in an alternate color, uh, buff color, just to add some variety. And the straps on the backpack are also white. And I think, oh, and uh, don't forget the backpack straps that you can see here should be painted white as well. And I think that's, uh, that's it for the white. So I'll do the white right now. So don't worry if you uh, aren't perfect on this stage. This is the blocking in of the colors stage. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to come back and go over it again and we can clean it up. But Like for example, I got a little thick on the uh, collar here, but when I go back with the blue, it'll be easier to thin that line out. Instead of trying to get the white line thin, I'll use the blue to thin the white line out. Uh, this guy's got a lot of straps on him. He's got horizontal straps, he's got vertical straps, he's got diagonal straps. They're all over the place. But uh, try to be as neat as you can, but it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to come back and uh, go over everything again. And at that point, we can clean it all back up. Uh, so next we'll do the hair. Um, for the, in this case, I'm just going to use that mahogany brown again as it's a good hair color and I happen to have it out right now. So now the hair can be any color you want. Um, I use a lot of this color. I use khaki gray from Vallejo as hair color as well. That gives a nice sort of dirty blonde effect. I use um, black gray for black hair. And that's a nice color for hair. Uh, I also use those, oh, uh, red leather. Red leather is a good color if you want to have red hair. And uh, yeah, so pretty much any color you want, or gray. I use gray as well. I want to make the guy look a little bit older. Uh, let's see here. So that's what I'm going to do for the hair. I'm just doing this all right now here on camera. I forgot the strap holding on the mess tin. There was something. Oh, the uh, the sling. The musket sling is also white. And with that, we are pretty much almost done. There's one last thing we got to do, and that is the strap holding on the canteen. And for that, I use German Camo Medium Brown. So there's a really thin strap here. I'm going to put it kind of right in between the epaulet and the uh, cross belt. And it's just going to be a thin strap that comes down. Also, I should do this at the same time. Uh, the little buckle on the front here I do in gold. For that, I'm just going to use gold. And then you do have to paint the strap going around the canteen. So I'll do both of those now. Blocking in the colors. 
So fairly quick. Uh, I usually do these guys four at a time. Uh, it helps uh, just break up the monotony of doing you know, 40 red coats, 40 pairs of boots. Uh, just do four at a time to completion and start the next four. That works well for me. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my bottle of liquid talent here and Agrac Earthshade and just go over the whole thing. Agrax Earthshade, Agrax Earthshade applied. So you want to put it on thick. You don't want to have put it on too thick, obviously, where it uh, pools and obscures any detail. Like a place that you'll know if you have too much is if this inside of this canteen is full of Agrax. You got to you can just get your brush and uh, dip it out. And other than that, it'll pool in places like in the arms and stuff. So just be careful of that. But otherwise, you can put it on fairly thick as you want to create, this is going to create depth and shadow instantly for us. That's why I call it liquid talent. So what I'll do now is I'll let this dry and we'll come back and we'll begin uh, highlighting. Alright, now the wash is completely dry and we have some nice shadow built in. You see everything's real dark now but we're going to fix that and what we're going to do is we're going to go over all of the same colors or all the uh, colors with the same color again just to bring the color back up but we're going to be very careful not to fill in any of those nice shadows that we've developed with the wash so in this uh, this stage of the model you need to start being a little bit more careful than you were in the first part and uh, we'll just start with the uh, uh, gray so we'll start with the pants and the bed Next thing we'll do is we'll hit the red again, and that again will be the Evil Sun's Scarlet, again leaving the shadows in the recesses. Next up we go back to the Prussian Blue for the cuffs and the facings. and. Again, you got to be careful because you not only have the shadow, but you're going to have the white on a lot of this stuff as well, like the cuffs that you're going to have to be careful of. This will also be the time if you happen to get any white in between these things, you can go in and touch them up to uh, get that separation between those lines again. And uh, yeah, so I'll go ahead and do the blue roll. I forgot I was supposed to do the, finish the pants first, so uh, normally I would do this part right before I do this. But uh, first thing we'll do, next thing we'll do is uh, we're going to highlight the pants. So this is our high tabletop standard um, step, and I'm going to take some of this Vallejo light gray, and I'm going to get it pretty watered down, and then I'm just going to go over all of these uh, creases along the bottom of the uh, pant cuffs and then kind of along the edge of the bed roll and that's it and that'll be the final highlighting step for the pants so done with the pants highlighting as you can see it's not super impressive when you look at it up close but again, this is tabletop standard. It's not supposed to withstand a rigorous close inspection or close photography. It's meant to look good uh, from tabletop distance and be fast. That's the whole point of it. So next thing we'll do is, uh, see, I did something out of, oh yeah, I did the blue uh, first. So what we'll do now is uh, the canteen again, because we're gonna use this canteen color, Calador Sky, and we're going to just lightly hit the edges of the cuffs and the collar and this uh, coming down the chest here. 
that'll be the highlight for that for the Prussian blue uh, will be this Calador sky so we'll do the uh, initial highlight layer on the canteen and the final highlight layer on the facing Next we will finish off the canteen by doing the final highlight on that and for that what I use is, what is this, uh, Teclas Blue by Citadel. So this is an edge highlight, so there's a nice lip going all the way around the edge of the canteen. I just go around that and then I do a little swirl kind of in the middle just to add a little highlight to the face of the canteen. Canteen complete. Next thing we're going to do is uh, highlight the red. So for this uh, step, I use this red, well, straight red from, uh, it says a model air. So model air color from by Vallejo are the same colors. They're just watered down more. Actually, these are really nice just for general painting, but I happen to have this laying around. It is a little bit brighter than the uh, scarlet that we use for the base. Not super, it's not really a big giant contrast, not even as much as the uh, light gray is to the neutral gray, but it's enough. So we're going to do the same thing, we're just going to hit the tops of these folds, and anywhere else that's raised, maybe on the elbow, maybe around the cuff here, and that'll add, it'll really make the uh, model pop. And uh, it's the final step that makes the red coat, the red coat. There it is, the red coat's done. Might be kind of hard to see, but it is a little bit brighter than it was. And it's a really nice, uh, vibrant color I like. Uh, I like these guys to look bright. I like to kind of consider them, this is a toy soldier style that I do, where they're kind of over-exaggerated, a little bit brighter than you normally would see. Uh, they're clean. They just, uh, it's just how I like these uh, Napoleonics to look. Uh, so the next we're gonna do is the musket stock and we're just going to do the same thing with the mahogany brown and this is really the only color on these guys that I actually add another color to to highlight so I'm going to go over it with the mahogany brown and then I'm going to take a little bit of the pallid witch flesh mix it in with the mahogany brown and just really lightly go over the top edge of the uh, musket stock maybe the high points along the uh, butt here and if you were going to do a buff bread bag you would also be able to add a little bit of the pallid witch flesh into that buff color and highlight the edges as well but this is going to be pallid uh, <laughs> this is a white bread bag so we're going to do it the same as the uh, straps and uh, belts and stuff next up we'll go over the musket barrel the bayonet and the bayonet scabbard again with the steel color. All right, next thing we're going to do, well, I guess before that, a little tip, uh, like especially on these muskets, the barrel kind of sits higher than the um, than the stock. What I do is I just get uh, a little blob of paint right on the tip, to make sure it's. Uh, wet enough to drag and then you just literally touch the ball of paint to the top of that and just drag it down slowly. If you do it right it should get exactly on top and on both sides just far enough down that it uh, matches with the top of this. If not you can always go back with the wood and touch up or vice versa if you get the wood onto the metal you can touch it up with that but yeah just get a little ball of paint on the tip and just drag it down. Super easy. And the next thing we're going to do is highlight the black. So highlighting black, you use a really dark gray and lighter gray. So I'm going to use this black gray. To, that's black. I have a black gray somewhere. Uh, where is that? Uh, here it is. Black gray. So black gray will go on the black, maybe cover 30%. Same thing. If you see any ridges or creases, go over with the uh, black gray. But you can add a little bit more black gray. 
And then for the final edge highlighting on the black, I'm going to use this, well, this is called anthracite gray, but it's actually Panzer, German Panzer gray. And this will just go on the extreme edges. So we'll just use the Palette Witch Flesh again, go over it pretty carefully, and once that's all done, and again with the Palette Witch Flesh, we're going to use Pure White to do the highlighting. So it's going to be just the top edges if you can. If not, if it gets over the whole thing, it's not a big deal. But uh, even if you kind of get it messed up, it'll look natural because there'll be a little bit of uh, the Palette Witch Flesh showing and there'll be some white, so it'll look somewhat uh, natural. So Palo Witch Flush and white to highlight all the white. That does it. That's the uh, model complete. Super fast. Super easy. Oh wait, I, I forgot to do the... Uh, the bread bag, but while I'm doing that, next thing I'm going to do is the face. And for the face, I just do the most basic face possible, as I really hate painting faces, and I just uh, am not very good at it. It's one thing I would really like to improve on, is face painting. But we're going to stick to our tabletop level theme here and just do a simple face. So the face I'm going to do is going to be using this highlight flesh. So I like to start with a really light color flesh and then I'm going to use some of this pallid witch flesh to hit the high points, the nose, the tops of the ears, the knuckles. And then once that's done I will use some of this Reichland flesh shade over the top of that. I water it down a little bit just so it's not so strong and so dark. And then once that's finally dry, what I'll do is I'll just get some white and I'll just dot the eyes and get some smaller dots of black and try to make him look human. Try to make it not look like he's uh, stepping on attack. Uh, it's not easy, so uh, the eyes on my guys are over the place. Uh, I've done good on some, not good on some others, but uh, they're there. So I'll go ahead and attempt to do the face and the eyes. finish the guy. My battery died so uh, I did forget to do the German Camo Brown Strap. I just redid that. Don't highlight that. It's just so skin it's so skinny that it's hard to highlight. So I just hit that with the original color and call it good. And then I did the base. Everyone does bases different. I'll go over real quick what I did. I just get some uh, cheap craft uh, paint from the craft store. Maybe two bucks for all this. Uh, the Vallejo Citadel stuff is a little bit too expensive to just be slopping on bases so the craft paint will do just fine, and then I do a dry brush with some uh, tan, tan earth over the top of that, and then just put some static grass down over some glue, call it done. So here he is, he's all done, did the eyes, these eyes came out uh, halfway decent, at least he's looking the same direction with both eyes, and uh, he's done. So that means I'm officially done uh, with my British force. Uh, we'll go take a quick look at uh, the Lion Troops when I put him in with the rest of his guys. And British Line complete. So with the completion of that last guy, my British Line Troops are now complete. So if you watch this channel, you know that I play Sharp Practice. If you're just watching this for the tutorial, you might not know that, but in Sharp Practice, uh, troops like this run in groups of eight. So having five of them will give me a lot of flexibility. Uh, three groups, two groups, four groups, however I want to do it. That's just a, a, a good amount of troops to have. And frankly, I don't know if I want to paint another eight guys, so I'm going to just stop at five. For now. I don't want to say never, but uh, for now, I'm definitely done with these guys. Uh, so, yeah, I think I started these on June 14th. Today's August 26th, so uh, close to a month and a, or two and a half months to complete my entire British Army, which I will go over in another video. But for this, for tonight, we're just going to look at uh, the Lang troops. So. Yeah, I'm real happy with them. Um, 
like I said, they're not going to win any awards. Uh, they're not going to be really photogenic in close-ups, as you're going to see all the kind of stark lines. But the stark lines help when you're at tabletop distance actually see some definition on fold and stuff like that. So uh, again, I'm happy with them, and I look forward to getting these guys into another game. And hopefully you guys found this uh, video useful. Let me know what you think, and uh, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.